Hi, thank you for watching Jason Adam TV on YouTube. If you haven't, please give us a thumbs up, uh, click subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. All right, um, so yesterday I was talking about uh, some things that are unique to Taiwan. Um, and today I'm going to start with um, Taiwan being the best place in the world to lose your wallet. Uh, Taiwan's one of the few places in the world where people actively search for the owner of an item they have found. Now this is not to say there's no crime in Taiwan, but it's much rarer than in most places in the world. And um, I've had this happen before. Um, I don't think I've lost my wallet here, but I did drop my cell phone several times uh, and people would pick it up and call the numbers on the phone to try to find out who the phone belonged to. Um, in order to get it back to its rightful owner and occasionally we'll hear stories in the news about uh, you know people who visit Taiwan and they um, they lose something and uh, and it finds their uh, finds its way back to them sometimes even after they've left the country um, the item will be mailed but somebody will find out where they live and mail the item back to them so the crime rate is extremely low in Taiwan um, and so many times if you do lose something you will get it back or someone will turn it in and you can go to the police station and pick it up um, so it is uh, the crime rate is amazingly low um, in Taiwan which is a blessing. I mean, I've never walked down the street wondering, you know, if I'm safe at night or um, wondering if someone's going to pick my pocket. You don't have to worry about any of those things here. Okay, uh, next. Karaoke is the Taiwanese way of clubbing. Well, I wouldn't say exactly that it's, it's the same as clubbing because Taiwan does have nightclubs in the larger cities. Um, but karaoke is extremely popular in Taiwan. Um, the, the author of this article points out that Taiwanese are normally very shy people. So she was surprised that this shyness doesn't apply to singing. And this is true. Taiwanese people will belt out songs loudly when they do karaoke. Um, and there are karaoke clubs everywhere. Uh, karaoke bars. And some of them are quite um, fancy. Uh, they lo they look like five star hotels. They have reception areas, and they have you can rent a private room for your karaoke party. And they have a catalog of thousands and thousands of songs you can choose from: English and Chinese, uh, and Japanese, um, different languages. And so they have some of them have little stages that the person singing can stand on, and they have food uh, like buffets that uh, you know while you're at the karaoke party, you can go to the buffet and pick up a plate of food and bring it back to your private karaoke room and um, and eat as you enjoy someone else singing to the music. So uh, yeah, karaoke is a big deal here. Many people have their own karaoke machines at home and uh, you know in special occasions uh, they and their friends or family will uh, sing songs for fun uh, at the karaoke bars you can also order liquor or beer to be brought to your um, private room okay uh, the next thing is you may be surrounded by people with masks and this is true, uh, even before COVID, and this might be one of the reasons why Taiwan was so successful in the beginning at uh, stopping the spread of COVID. And e even now, we had an outbreak back in May. Uh, now the cases are back down in the single digit range per day. Um, so we've got the outbreak under control within a few months in Taiwan. So the reason Taiwanese people wear masks is um, 
it is a sign of politeness when someone is sick they are supposed to wear a mask to you know let other people know that they're sick and also to to help stop the spread of their germs to other people uh, so it's a matter of etiquette in Taiwan to wear a mask when you're sick um, also a lot of people wear them because of air pollution I'm not so sure how you know the I, I don't think the regular medical masks will protect you from you know PM 10 or PM 2.5 but it might help a little bit so some people wear them uh, to protect from air pollution when they're riding their scooters or walking out in public uh, so it's it's a much more it was a much more common sight to see someone wearing a mask in Taiwan than than say in America even before COVID so most people kept a stash of masks at home and even when you know the mask supply ran low uh, the government came up with a scheme uh, to ration the mask so that everyone would have uh, a mask to wear and I know a lot of people are skeptical as to the efficacy of wearing a medical mask in slowing the spread of COVID-19 but many uh, scientific studies have shown that they do slow the spread of COVID. They might not be 100% effective, but anything that is effective in slowing the spread is is worthwhile. So, so this is actually a good thing. Uh, coming from America, I resisted wearing masks for a long time, and I tried to think to myself, well, why do Americans, why are Americans uh, so against wearing masks and the only thing I can think of is you know in the old gangster movies and the old cowboy movies the bad guys would wear uh, a covering over their face um, so it could be like people think are suspicious of you maybe in America if you wear a mask they think you have something to hide uh, that could be the the basis for the uh, the hatred of masks wearing masks in America um, but yeah I mean I, I've tested my uh, blood oxygen level wearing a mask and it doesn't drop so uh, wearing a mask is not going to smother you uh, that is a fallacy and it is effective in slowing the spread of COVID so this was a habit that actually helped protect Taiwan from the spread of COVID and so we spent a much shorter time well we never had a hard lockdown we we had uh, restaurants closed and bars closed but we never had a hard lockdown like other places around the world okay uh, the next item uh, that is unique to Taiwan is the Taiwanese never say no. Uh, well, I would add to this, I would never say never. Sometimes they do say no, but they don't like saying no directly, usually. So the author says this was the most confusing uh, thing to her about living in Taiwan. Uh, people have an aversion to giving a clear and direct no to a question. Like, um, if you call a friend and ask if they want to see a movie, uh, and your Taiwanese friend says, maybe, they actually mean no. Uh, they just can't bring themselves to say no directly. Or maybe later, you know, um, you know, leaving open the possibility, but not shutting you down directly. And... So a lot of Taiwanese consider saying no directly as being impolite. Um, so this can be confusing to a lot of Westerners who are are used to people saying no directly without being offended. Okay, and finally for today, um, the uh, next unique thing about Taiwan is the convenience stores or in particular 7-Eleven. Uh, this author describes 7-Eleven as your new office and it, it's kind of true. They have 
they have tables that you can work at or eat at. Uh, most of them do. Uh, they have copy machines um, and photo printers um, and ticket printers. Um, so 7-Eleven is here is totally different from 7-Eleven in America or you know in other countries. It's one of the most convenient places on earth. You can get train tickets, you can pay your school tuition, you can ship packages and receive packages, you can print documents, you can call for a taxi, uh, and so much more. Uh, the author asked if she could leave her, her backpack there uh, and have them watch her backpack for a while, and they said yes. So you can actually drop packages there or backpacks, and they, they might actually hold them for you uh, while you do something else. Uh, they are extremely convenient. They also have fresh meal boxes or f uh, like bento boxes. Um, you might have heard the term bento box during the Olympics, Tokyo Olympics. A bento box is just um, like a, a boxed lunch and um, it could be any type of food. It could be noodles, it could be fried chicken, um, it could be any type of food and they have a wide selection of these and they are freshly prepared uh, usually they they give them uh, like a two or three day uh, time limit and they'll print the t date and time that the box was made in the factory and the date and time that it expires so you can know if you're getting a fresh box and they pull them from the shelf anyway when they expire um, and so you can get you a, a meal box and heat it up in the microwave at 7-Eleven and actually eat it there. Uh, and a lot of the foods are tasty and they are nutritious too. They're not like the junk foods that you might find in, in other convenience stores in other countries. Uh, you, you won't see a hot dog that looks shriveled up from hours of sitting under the heat lamp at the 7-Eleven in Taiwan, most most of the time their food is r rather fresh. You can even get salads there, different types of salads, uh, different types of uh, breads and cookies. So it is really convenient. Uh, you can also, this is something that is uh, very different from America and that is you can drink your beer at 7-Eleven or you can drink it outside on the 7-Eleven patio. Some of them have a patio out front. Uh, you can buy a whiskey or a beer and you can drink it in public um, on the sidewalk and you know people watch or whatever you want to do uh, without worrying about outdated laws uh, without worrying about the police ticketing you because you're drinking in public. So so yeah, Taiwan is really laid back when it comes to a lot of things. Um, and that's refreshing. It is really nice that that you're able to do all these things. It is a very convenient place. Okay, uh, thank you for watching Jason Adam TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.